Hello Internet, and welcome back to my reviews of the John Wick films. This here is our final stop with the latest entry and the final chapter of Keanu Reeves' Revenge Saga, John Wick Chapter 4. Sometime in the near future, there's going to be a spin-off film called Ballerina starring Ana de Armas that'll take place between John Wick Chapters 3 and 4. We don't know anything about it, other than that it's been shot and been through post-production. And Norman Reedus is in it, alongside Keanu Reeves, Ian McShane, and Lance Reddick. And the only other thing we know about is the Continental miniseries coming to Peacock. This movie clocks in at 2 hours and 49 minutes, making this the longest entry in the series. But nowhere near as long as Avengers Endgame or Zack Snyder's Justice League. But still plenty of time to keep your bladder in check so you don't find yourself going to the restroom during everything this epic movie has to offer. The best way to describe this movie is Logan and No Time to Die, but with John Wick. Seeing that Logan and No Time to Die mark the end of an era for iconic film characters, I'm sure most of you have seen Logan by now, and No Time to Die is one of my favorite Bond films to date, and has one of the most bittersweet endings. But I'm not going to spoil that movie, or this one, because unlike the first three John Wick films, this review will be entirely spoiler free. In John Wick Chapter 4, the titular hitman takes one final stand against the high table, and thus he goes up against a colorful cast including Donnie Yen and Bill Skarsgård. Yes people, Pennywise from IT. Bill Skarsgård is actually the son of Stellan Skarsgård, best known for his portrayal of Eric Selvig in the MCU, and Luthen in Andor. Donnie Yen also portrayed Chirrut Inwe in Rogue One. And just like in Rogue One, he plays a blind man who can kick ass when no one is watching in John Wick Chapter 4. This is definitely by far the best film in the series, and a worthy conclusion to the tale of Baba Yaga. I don't think the previous three films can top this one. The visual style, the action sequences, and some top-notch camera work. Especially certain shots during the final act of the film. It's because of these things and more that make John Wick Chapter 4 one of the greatest action films in recent history, and the best action film of the 2020s thus far. I'm giving John Wick Chapter 4 a 10 out of 10. I seem to be giving that same score to each new entry in this series, but it is true. John Wick Chapter 4 is definitely a fitting conclusion to the saga of John Wick. A perfect send-off to an action icon, just like Logan in No Time to Die. Except No Time to Die is not rated R like Logan in John Wick Chapter 4. This movie has some really intense and pulse-pounding action sequences, some great pieces of cinematography. Probably some of the best I've seen in film in a very long time. And dare I say, I enjoyed this movie a lot better than Creed 3 and Shazam Fury of the Gods. If you're looking for something to do on one of your days off, or you're in the mood for something with a gripping story and memorable fight sequences, then go to the nearest theater, or the nearest IMAX if you have it, and go see John Wick Chapter 4 on the biggest screen possible. You're in for a real treat with this one. Stay tuned for all my other upcoming projects and reviews coming soon. I know I said I was going to try to do a review of Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves, but due to time constraints with Sonic & Sonic and Infinite World of Pain Part 3, that review has been shelved. But I am planning on reviewing 2023's The Little Mermaid and 1989 Batman, and the Mission Impossible movies leading up to Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. More details will come at a later date. Until then, I'll see you all next time.